The DLC brought back Hitmonchan and they actually gave it a nice little buff. This thing now gets access to Swords Dance, enabling it to double its attack, and with this at base 105 attack, it can definitely pack a punch. It can also find an opening to live a hit with its solid base 110 special defense, and its Iron Fist ability gives it a 20% boost in damage to all of its punching moves. After a little setup, we can now take advantage of Iron Fist boosted priority mock punches, along with Drain Punch to hit hard and heal, and any coverage you need in the elemental punches. With its new toy, this new Sharp Fist Hitmonchan can actually go pretty crazy. Look, I've said it before, I'ma say it again. Never underestimate a dude in a skirt. It's a rookie mistake, and Hitmonchan is an absolute beast. I really feel like this thing, with its new Sword Stance buff, no one really pays much attention to this thing, but that's what I'm here for. And if you're into that kind of thing, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps out. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So today's match is a very good one against a team that has a whole lot of threats on it. Now, my opponent decides to lead off with the Gengar. I, of course, toss out the Walnut. He's a wall, he's a nut. And uh, we gold as hell out here, ready to basically just set up some Stealth Rock. This isn't really the ideal matchup for me. However, nothing really wants to deal with Gengar. This guy's just been throwing Shadow Balls for 25 years, and it's damn effective. Now, he goes for that Shadow Ball, of course. I, uh, I take way too much damage, does allow me to set up my Stealth Rock. However, now the problem becomes, do I even try to conserve Fortress? I could potentially switch into Umbreon, where this thing is not really a, a usual Umbreon. It's going to come in and it's going to take a little bit of damage from a Shadow Ball and probably force this thing out, but then I'm like, I'm just going to I'm just gonna try to get myself some momentum, allow the Fortress to go down here to another Shadow Ball, um, and you know, that's fine. I got up my Stealth Rock and died and just doing all sorts of fortress type of shit out here. So now, I figure, I'm gonna actually just switch into the Umbreon now. I probably should have, in hindsight, gone for the switch here. Um, whereas this is actually, it's an offensive setup Umbreon. It doesn't have uh, any special defense investment, which is why I was kind of reluctant uh, to switch into like a potential sludge bomb. And uh, the reason is because, yeah, this thing needs all the help it can get to try to be offensive. Now, they decide to switch out. They're actually going to end up going into the Volcarona. This thing is an absolute problem. It also does not take any stealth rock damage, does reveal. Uh, you can, he doesn't have any feet, but somehow Buddy's wearing some heavy duty boots. Um, and uh, he's got his Tims on over there, not taking any damage. I do get a curse up. And that's pretty nice. My little black kitty ass, however, is sitting here on a silver platter, uh, free to be opened of bug buzzes. Now, I decide to go for the Terra. I was really considering whether or not I should burn my Terra here. It doesn't seem like Umbreon's gonna be in a spot to do a whole lot. However, you know, Volcarona is definitely a problem. So I'm gonna go for the Terra Fairy. Now, Terra Fairy is gonna allow me to obviously be able to take a bug buzz nicely. It actually, it would have been pretty ideal to be able to get off a, um, a throat chop before they click bug buzz because throat chop does uh, block from uh, using sound based moves for two turns uh, just karate chop right to the damn throat of the volcarona however i just take this opportunity to uh, first of all take no damage from a bug buzz but second of all i go for a second curse and i'm like all right this is this umbreon is out here set up pretty nicely i do figure that a throat chop should be able to take care of this thing uh, and they're actually going to end up going for the quiver dance and uh they're like they're basically betting on the fact that this Umbreon does not have enough firepower uh, to end up knocking it out. And they're going to try to set up as much as possible. I do go for that Throat Chop, and it does not <laughs> quite knock this thing out. That's where uh, the Heavy Duty Boots came in clutch. Uh, and now we're in a decently bad spot, mostly just because I've burnt my Terra. Uh, a lot of this team comp does kind of rely on Terra, but I figured... You know, the Volcarona being a threat, I just wanted to try to assess it as much as possible. So, they now decide to go for the Giga Drain, even with a Quiver Dance, not going to do a whole lot of damage there. I'm able to Karate Chop him one more time, and that is going to take care of it, but also is going to activate the Flame Body. I should not have fucked around and touched the Volcarona. Now I find myself having used my Terra. Not only that, but I'm burnt, and also, uh, they do in fact have the ability to just go right back into Gengar. And uh, from this range, I definitely die to a sludge bomb. I feel like at least, so not super ideal, but uh, it is what it is. Now they decide to go back into that Gengar, of course. At this point, I'm actually unsure of what item this thing is even running, but it comes in, does take some stealth rock damage, which is helpful if this thing is Focus Ash, which I probably feel like it is. Um, again, I don't really have much that wants to switch into this, so I decide a burnt Umbreon, even with two curses, is uh, probably not gonna make much happen. So, I do let the Umbreon go down, which is fine. That thing will be back later, I assure you. I mean, not today, but soon. Anyway, this is gonna at least open the door for a free switch. Now, 
I obviously have the goofiest team ever where you already know I have a Milotic and you already know this thing is definitely not going to be the usual kind of the, the defensive one. Instead, it is of course a Dragon Dance Milotic and uh, we're going to see if I can get something going here. They actually end up committing the Terra as they go into Terra Grass, which is probably a good move considering my best option if I'm a normal Milotic is probably clicking Scald. It also now gives them the stab boost to an energy ball and I'm like, oh Jesus, please. I don't have much bulk invested on this thing, however, it does allow us to live it because my low tick is just a thick ass hoe anyway. And I do in fact end up landing a Hypnosis. This thing is carrying the blunder policy with the Hypnosis. It's always good if it hits, but also if it misses, then I just get doubled speed. And then uh, we're starting to set up with the Milotic. This thing is named Garatrace because it's supposed to be, it, it's basically Gyarados at this point, just a worse version. And it's here to try to catch people off guard. So. I decided to now go for the Dragon Dance. I do successfully put the Gengar to sleep, which is actually uh, super nice. And also, one important thing to note, that thing going for the Grass Terra actually opens the door for Hitmonchan to be nice against it. So, I'm pretty happy about that. The problem is this damn Reuniclus, old fetus Jellybean, is uh, another thing standing in the way of the Hitmonchan. It's important to note that because at this point I'm realizing the Hitmonchan is going to be the win con. And uh, the only way for that to happen is going to be to try to use up some resources and at least take care of the Reuniclus. So, with that, I decide to go into the obvious triangle here where I can go for the Chloroblast. Anyway, I just started blasting. I'm Choice Specs. I know that's the only thing that kills here. It does take care of half of my health, but it's a small price to pay to get the Reuniclus gone because, again, uh, I'm finding the opening for the Hitmonchan and it's looking more and more promising here. Now, they decide to get a free switch, they can go back into the Sleepy Gengar. Uh, this thing is pretty much guaranteed to burn a turn of sleep here, so obviously I'm stuck choice backed into you know, the Chloroblast. I don't want to blast myself to death, so I decide to switch into the Haxorus. Um, Haxorus is a dude that I feel like used to be extremely popular, literally nobody ever uses this thing anymore, but I think he's badass, so he's on the team. Anyway, they do stay asleep, and at this point, I have a couple different options. With the remaining mons they have left, they have a solid check you know, to the Haxorus with the Gliscor, so I decided I'm actually just gonna go for some damage here as they just do in fact wake up, go for that Sludge Bomb, which I'm able to take at least one of, and then the Dragon Claw is gonna finish off the Gengar. So, with that thing gone, they now have half of their team left, and uh, the biggest threat is gonna be the Gliscor, which of course they're gonna go into here. This thing's defensive is titties. It always is gonna be a toxic heal with like Protect, and uh, yeah, always a pretty effective mon here. So, I decided to just go for the Dragon Claw. I would like to get some chip here, but more importantly, I can't really switch anything out, uh, as it does in fact have the, the coverage with the Ice Fang. So, I'm just gonna take care of the Haxorus, uh, down that thing goes. But honestly, we did our job in taking care of the Gengar, and what that does is it ensures that Hitmonchan is healthy. And now, it is Baby Groot time, baby. We're gonna go into this thing here, and uh, we're actually going to be in a position to where I know an Earthquake does around half to me. However, I know that they're going to go for a Protect because I've played against the Gliscor a time or two. And that leaves the door wide open for the one move that can set us up for a late game sweep here. And that is with the Sword Stance. Thank God they buffed the Hitmonchan here. That's going to double our attack. And even with the Poison Heal, uh, an Ice Punch definitely kills here. The problem is Gliscor is still faster because... Uh, we, got a little, we skip leg day pretty often. However, what we do not skip is fuck Ice Punch to the Face Day. And that takes care of the Gliscor. Uh, the Earthquake does around half to us, which is fine. And uh, the Life Orb is going to chip us a bit here. However, we're set up in a spot where I'm feeling pretty confident because the two remaining Mons Hitmonchan is about to absolutely feast on. We have the Umbreon here, uh, who ordinarily would live a Drain Punch if it was not for the Swords Dance. I can obviously outspeed, uh, pop him right in the Kisser, and that takes care of... Uh, of the Umbreon. Not only that, but also it gets us back to full HP, which is always extremely satisfying, and uh, that is absolutely amazing. Now, the final Mon they have left is arguably the scariest on their team, especially in this exact situation, and that is because King Gambit is able to come out and get some strength from the fallen homies. He pours one out for the boys and gets a, a nice, little, uh, nice little attack boost here. However, you can enjoy that attack boost in the damn Shadow Realm because I can just go for the Mach Punch with that priority ensure it takes care of the King Gambit uh, and down goes the final Mon. So Hitmonchan coming in absolutely clutch in the late game there and uh, that is going to be the end of the match. So I thought that was pretty fun. I've been using Hitmonchan a lot lately. There's honestly a lot of fun stuff that you can do with this thing with like Assault Vest sets. Uh, in my opinion, Swords Dance with the access to that Mach Punch is actually 
pretty amazing if you can find an opening. But if you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like on the video. It really does help out the channel. And uh, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.